Number 73, find the minimum thickness of a soap bubble that appears red. When illuminated by white light perpendicular to its surface, take the wavelength to be 680 nanometers and assume the same index of refraction as water. All right, so please review number 71. Talked in detail about this thin film interference, how to think through it, what's going on. Now I'm going to start running through, let's say, formulas. All right, so we know that our uh, constructive interference here a uh, formula for a thin film interference is this. It's going to be equal to 2 multiplied by the thickness of the film is going to be then a function of basically the wavelength in a particular medium, in this case in the soap, divided by then 2. Or it could have been 3 halves, basically the wavelength, or it could have been 5 halves, right? Ba 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 ba. So what we need to do is we need to find the minimum thickness. So basically you can set this equal to this, or you can set this equal to this, or you can set et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you notice, we, in order to find the minimum of the TC, in order to find the minimum thickness that gives us constructive interference, by the way, should give us then the smallest value on the right-hand side. Now, is this one half smaller than three halves? Yes. Is then that smaller than five halves? Yes, et cetera. So the smallest thickness here will correlate with this first part. In other words, 2 multiplied by the thickness of the film to produce constructive interference should be equal to then the wavelength of the light in the material, in the soap, divided by 2. Now, to find the thickness, this is simple algebraically. This is just the wavelength in the film divided then by 4. But the thing is, what's the wavelength in the film? Well, if you're seeing red light, that's not the wavelength in the film. That's the wavelength in air. Your eye's in air, unless the soap bubble's in your eye, right? So the wavelength that was given here, the 680 nanometers, all right, is going to be the wavelength in air. And again, check out number 71 for the concept. Now, I don't want to know the wavelength in air. I can't plug in. I got to plug in the wavelength in the medium, in the soap. So I need to use this formula over here on the upper right-hand side. This says that the wavelength in, let's say, the soap is equal to then the wavelength in a vacuum. Now remember, the wavelength in a vacuum is very similar to the wavelength in air because the indices of refraction there are basically one. They're both one, right? Basically. So divide that then by the index of refraction of that particular uh, uh, medium. And that in this case, it's that almost looks like soup, right? I'm just looking at it. Soap. Not soup. Soap. Mm, soup sounds good right now. You're like, what? What are you, 98? Anyway, uh, the index of refraction of soap goes down here. All right. So what we need to do now is uh, we need to basically just plug in the values, right? So this, the wavelength in the soap is going to be equal to the wavelength in air of 680 nanometers. By the way, I'm going to leave it in nanometers. All right. And it told us the index of refraction of the water here, which is the Assume that that is what the index of refraction of the soap is. That's going to be 1.333, right, roughly. So just take the 680, divide it by then 1.333, whatever, or one, two, three, it doesn't matter. Um, the wavelength of then the soap, the wavelength of the light in the soap, is going to equal one, uh, about 510 nanometers. Now careful, write your answers in nanometers. That's okay. That's okay to plug it in, but just be aware of what units you're using. So now what we're going to do is we can finally now plug in this 510 divided by 4. I'm using the exact value in the calculator. I'm going to divide that exact value by 4. So this works out to be about 127. Now, I think it's going to matter, by the way, possibly in terms of the rounding, if you went out to, I went out to, in my calculator, I put an extra 3 here. But let me see if it does make a difference. So 680 over 1.33, then divide that then by 4. So fortunately, it actually won't matter. So this still should work out to be about 128. All right, and that's in terms of now nanometers. So that's the minimum thickness of the film. All right, in order for when light is incident perpendicular to the surface for your eye to detect uh, red. Again, check out number 71 for the concept. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Please, if you can help us out, that'd be awesome. Uh, subscribe, like, all right? Maybe even mention us to your classmates if you can. And by the way, we're also covering a lot of other subjects. So keep us in mind if you're taking chemistry or precalculus or calculus or biochemistry or statistics. All right. Um, because we got a lot of stuff out there solving specific problems. All right. And we usually go through the OpenStax book. 
So even if you're not using the book, guess what? The problems are basically the same thing in all the textbooks. So we solve specific problems. I guarantee if you take a look at the book, go to OpenStax, it's free. Download the book, find a problem that is similar to yours. We'll have a video out there for you. And then you'll be able to figure out your specific problem. Guys, thanks again. See you soon.